We're going back to school. That's right. We're here at the National RV Training Academy in Athens, Texas for a week of RV training. We are inside the 15,000 foot big red schoolhouse. It's big, and it's red, <laughs> <laughs> and it's really an amazing facility. Yeah, and Chad just finished up his week-long RV fundamentals course, and I'm excited to hear a little bit more about it because I got a little bit of debriefing every day, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he was waiting until we filmed this for me to really hear what's going on. Yeah, and we'll cover each little bit of each day and what that goes into. First, I think we want to just tell you a little bit about what this is and why we're here. So the NRVTA, what the heck does that stand for? <laughs> it's the National RV Training Academy. And it's in Athens, Texas. This is an awesome building. They have this main room here, which was the place where I took the fundamentals course. They also have three additional full classrooms mm -hmm. in this building, and that's where they teach other classes at the same time. And they also, that's where we did our breakout labs during my class. The NRVTA was started by Terry Cooper, who had years of teaching RV techs at Texas State Technical College in Waco, Texas. That's a tough tongue twister to yes, say. Yes, it took me three <laughs> times to say that. Terry, a.k.a. Cooper, and his wife, Eveda, a.k.a. Lady E, <laughs> <laughs> along with the Andersons, which are Steve and Kathy Joe, started the NRVTA. There was a big opportunity there for Tex. This came about because they were traveling the country, mm -hmm. teaching people a course similar to this, but they were doing it remotely and as they traveled. Mm -hmm. And they decided it was time to build a facility. And they've been teaching here ever since. So if you were to take every course offered here, you would be here for seven weeks. <laughs> yeah. They offer the RV Fundamentals class, which is what I took, and that serves as the base mm -hmm. before you go on to either two courses or both courses. So one of the directions you can go is as a certified inspector. And the inspector route adds two more weeks onto the week, so that's three weeks of training. Mm -hmm. And then there's the tech course, which adds four more weeks on top of the week, so that's five weeks. So if you wanted to do both a certified inspector and tech course, you can do that and you'll be here for seven weeks. There are quite a few people that actually do that and they, mm -hmm. they take every course that's offered. Sometimes they come here just starting with the basics of RV fundamentals because they want to learn how to fix their own RV and it grows into something mm -hmm. that they become more and more interested in and they see the value in continuing their education. So it's been interesting to hear people's stories. My name is Keith Woods. I'm from Savannah, Georgia. And what classes are you taking while you're here? The RV Fundamentals Week 1. Are you taking other courses besides this one? I am coming back in August to complete the four-week program for the RV Tech. Awesome. And 2020 was strange, right? Because a lot of people got laid off. A lot of people were looking for work. Uh, a lot of people are RVing. Mm -hmm. And so there's so much you can do with the courses offered here. I think Tony was saying that about 44% of their students that take the RV Fundamentals course are doing it just strictly for their own edification, to learn how to work on their own RV. And didn't he say it was something about 25% then of those people mm -hmm. decide after taking the Fundamentals course that they want to take additional courses? It was yeah. something like that. I think that's actually a really good way to mm -hmm. kind of get your feet wet and see if you like this because you might not know if you're going to like working on RVs. Maybe yeah. you don't even have an RV. You don't have to have an RV to come here and work and learn this skill. That's true. Because you may not be traveling in an RV, you just may live in an area that lacks technicians, mm -hmm. which is everywhere. <laughs> Trust we me. We have personally had mm -hmm. a hard time finding technicians available in certain areas. So. Oh yeah, we've had to get them from, from hours away yeah. and stuff. So there is definitely a lot of work out there. 
And there's so many different areas too, whether you want to dig into the tech side or you might just want to get into the maintenance side. Mm -hmm. You can take this RV fundamentals course, you can become a registered tech, and then maybe you just clean ACs and service RV air conditioners or RV fridges. There's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done on RVs that's not super technical, but getting this knowledge will really give you a good foundation for that also. My name is Roger Malone and I am from Cross City, Florida. So what courses are you taking here? Took the RV fundamentals week one and I'm staying for the additional four weeks to get the RV technician, certified technician. Cool, going for the whole thing. During the week of the fundamentals course, they actually offer additional classes for small business owners. Mm -hmm. So how to get started, like creating your own business, if this is what you want to do and you want to have your own business as an inspector or as an RV tech and you want to go, let's say from RV park to RV park and put your sign out there and get work, well, there's the business aspect yeah. to it too that a lot of people don't understand or feel like, well, that's great, I understand the tech, but I don't understand the business stuff. Mm -hmm. So they do an hour every morning before the fundamentals course, so yeah. it's early. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's about an hour and a half, I think, or so. Yeah, the class, I think, starts around 8.30, so from 7 to 8.30, with a little break in there, mm -hmm. you're learning the business side. And he really goes into it, you know, forming a corporation, figuring out your startup costs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's involved, paying your taxes, because that's new for a lot of people who mm -hmm. haven't been self-employed before. And he has a lot of great tips to not only help you save money, but how to mm -hmm. do things right and how to do things legally. And I think it's very valuable, especially if you've never had your own business. And also something that I thought was really neat was that they allow the spouses to come in and take the business part of it too, right. with the person who's actually taking the course. So if a husband and wife are not taking the course together, let's say it's just the husband taking the course. Or the wife. Or the wife just taking the course, then the spouse can come and take the small business course with mm -hmm. them. Or I've even had folks who have told me they've been in business for a lot of years and come up at the end of the week and say, I sure wish I'd have met you a few years ago. I would have saved a lot of time. That's completely optional. You know, if you're not starting a business, you don't have to get up early and go to that. Mm -hmm. It's a super, super neat thing that's just mm -hmm. a bonus. Another thing that's really neat that's going down like right now this week. It's going down. It's going down. Is they are in the process and almost done getting their state certification. I think it's from the Texas Workforce Commission. That, that will make them a certified vocational school. style school. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line of that is veterans who have GI Bill will be able to use that GI Bill for this course. That's awesome. Which is awesome. So cool. I love that. And I don't know what other benefits there might be around that if somebody has like a state scholarship fund or something. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it. Let's find out how your week went. It was good. It was really, really good. I have to say, I wasn't really sure what to expect as far as the facility and the classroom. The setup in here is really good. They've got cameras and a big screen and everything is mic'd up. And even when the students ask questions, the TAs come over with microphones so that everybody can hear. Nobody's left out of the conversation here. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It's a fundamentals course, but it goes pretty deep into all the main systems. Day one and day two, was all about RV, electricity, and electrical systems. First day of school. It's like going to the school of us on the first day. <laughs> yeah, so day one, um, the itinerary says that spouses are allowed to join. I was gonna go anyhow, but um, it seems like that's just a common thing that they that they do, which is kind of neat because you can get, the spouses can kind of get a, a feel for what's going on. It is, let's see, seven, 713 and if you know us this is way early, way for, early us. for us if it's like high school <laughs> he's gonna walk he's gonna walk into the classroom with donuts on all of his fingers <laughs> eat them all and probably go to sleep if it's like high school he's gonna bring his own bags of m&ms and sell them cheaper than the what they're selling them for in the in the snack area here sure. you want me to go on the high school stories <laughs> It's like I'm dropping my kid off at school for the first day. Mom, don't walk me in. See, you're embarrassing. Good Hello, good morning. Good, morning. good, morning. good, good how are you? I 
you doing? I'm RJ Waddy from Riverside County, California. And what classes are you taking here at NRVTA? Uh, I'm actually going to take all the classes. Uh, you're, doing, so you're doing both the inspector and the tech track yes. also. Yes. Uh -huh. Very cool. And what yeah. are you going to do with all that knowledge? I want to start a new business. Uh, this is the second part of my life and I've worked uh, 16 hours a day. So I want to start having some fun, enjoy my life and then do something that will help with my retirement and uh, have vacation while I'm retiring. Hi, I'm Steve Hurwitz and I am from Phoenix, Arizona. I sold my sticks and bricks house back in January. So now I am living on the road on four wheels so I can live anywhere. What classes are you taking here at uh, NRBTA? I took the uh, fundamentals class this week, which was fabulous. And I will be taking literally every class that's offered. So I'm going into the tech classes next. I'll be taking solar, then generator, and then the inspector courses as well. You're doing the whole shebang, huh? Everything they have, yes. Very cool. And what are your plans? Are you doing a business? Yeah, I'm going to start a business called uh, Tech RV with a K. My goal is to have an inspection and repair business. Now that you've taken your first week here, what are your thoughts on the course? Uh, I thought the course was fabulous. The building, the uh, instructor, the material was all far exceeding my expectations. I got a lot out of it. I wasn't sure, you know, I came from an electronics background and I understand electricity and I've done all of our own wiring. You guys know that <clears throat> if you've seen some of our previous videos, inverter or mm -hmm. batteries or electrical systems and yeah. all of that. But I still learned quite a bit, even on the stuff that I thought I knew. Wait, uh, I, gotta, I gotta jump in because we met a lot of people this week who watched our channel or know who we were and they, <laughs> they all said, why the heck is Chad taking this course? I've learned everything I know so far from watching your videos. <laughs> and so I thought that was funny because some of you might be thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. But this is why I'm really enjoying hearing how much you actually got out of this course. You yeah. Know? You know, I like taking structured courses like this on topics that I've kind of learned ad hoc, which I did. The RV stuff was always this and that. You've probably seen videos where we talk to Todd mm -hmm. about like servicing our AC systems. So That's what I wanted to bring up too, yeah. is, is Todd, who you've seen in mm -hmm. several of our videos, he's the main instructor for the course. Mm -hmm. Mr. Todd Hansen. Yeah. <laughs> Hansen, along with his lovely wife, but I'll get the upslip speak for himself. I've got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the only time. <laughs> and so that was really cool that we got to actually meet Todd and his wife, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Stephanie is the director for the NRVIA. Yeah, the Inspectors Association. Yes. So yeah, day one and two were all about RV electrical. Not only is it about the RV electrical, but you learn how to use cool tools like this. So the first thing I'd like you to do is grab your multimeters and just one at a time come over here. We're gonna check the nominal voltage at this battery. Granted, I already knew a lot about these, but I did learn some other things. Uh, I got to bring back some of my knowledge about Ohm's Law and Watt's Law and how to combine the two and, and use that for troubleshooting. So you don't have to have really any experience or knowledge that to That was going to be my question. So if somebody came in, someone like me who has no electrical background, it was still presented in a way that someone like me could follow it? Yep. They got right down into how to set the dials on this, what to look for explaining the concepts of RV electricity or electricity in general, the difference between AC and DC and how they work. And there was a whole range of knowledge here. Everything from people who'd never- You mean with the students? With the students, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to have really anything to come to this. When you register for the class, they do send you a lot of pre-study stuff. So that helps you to kind of get your feet wet with the concepts before you get here. Which is great for people who are like me that don't have even the basic knowledge that you had. So getting the homework ahead of time, you can take as much time or as little time as you think that you need mm -hmm. to get ready for it. Yeah, definitely. Today, this part of the course is really key for any RVer because electrical systems on RVs are just weird. You've got AC and DC all mixed together and having the knowledge and the ability to be able to check your outlets, to know where that power is coming from, what kind of power it is, versus say the power to your lights, which is a different type of power. And understanding what powers what in your RV and what's gonna work on hookups, what's gonna work on batteries. And getting a feel for how it all works is really key. 
Another thing that's cool is they usually will give you some type of homework at the end of each day that you can then take back to your RV and try out. I want you guys to do an energy audit. And what do I mean by that? I want you to find out how much you're consuming. And that's the kind of homework you think it's fun. I, I do, I do, I like, I like stuff like that. They also have RVs here for you if you didn't come in an RV or don't have your RV yet. They do have some RVs outside that you can practice on. Mm -hmm. Day three in the morning, we jumped right into propane systems. And I did learn quite a bit here. They've got some of the different types of tanks cut at a cross section so they can explain how things work in there, what the different oh, safety mechanisms cool. are. They actually have a tank cut mm -hmm. and stuff? Yeah. Oh, cool. But you see I have a J-tube to the top and to the bottom of my two valves. Next to that is we have a gauge. You know that gauge that tells you how much propane you have in there? We also get to learn how to use cool tools. Cool tools is hard to say like this. What like is this. that? It's a manometer. <laughs> <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> it's a manometer, but it's spelled manometer. No, that, that measures pressure and we use that to do several different tests on the propane system, which you learn how to do. And then you go back to your RV and you try it out. Very cool. Day three in the afternoon was all about the water systems, fresh tanks, black tanks, you know, the sensors, just all kinds of stuff, all about that. And Is that when all the poo jokes happen? That's when a lot of poo jokes happen. <laughs> you're trying to, you reach over and you put your fantastic fan on high. You look over, your toilet paper is now flying in the air because the fantastic fan's pulling it up. <laughs> this bit of levity that we have talking about this, Todd takes that through the entire week. He really, he's funny, he keeps you engaged. I mean, I knew a lot about this day one and day two stuff ahead of time, but I wasn't bored at all the whole time. We don't lick batteries. I don't know who has taught you that. <laughs> when we get over to capacitors, we lick capacitors. <laughs> Day four in the morning, we jumped into air conditioning systems. And that was kind of neat because we worked with Todd on an RV air conditioning Vi maintenance mm -hmm. video. And so it was neat to see some of that stuff, but also take it a little bit deeper mm -hmm. and talk about what kind of impedance you should be reading on lines or what type of resistance you might want to read across your compressor or your fan motor and how to figure out what you need to look for and how to measure and diagnose stuff without taking it apart and just swapping stuff out like, oh, I think it's the compressor. Let's just try that. Oh, you know, that's not the way to troubleshoot. You should be lazy and troubleshoot smart. Okay. Come to this class to find out how to be lazy. <laughs> Afternoon of day four was all about RV refrigeration. This is what we're going to work on here today is an RV style refrigerator because that's what we're certified in. We've got two different types of heating sources. I can go propane with my burner assembly or I can go 120 volt with my candy cane heating on it. So we learned a little bit about that and again, took it a little bit deeper to learn about some of the more technical aspects of the control boards and what voltages to read and where. So we got to learn a lot about how absorption refrigerators work. Todd covered this in our video when he was talking to us on chat, but I was like, yeah, okay, whatever this goes there and that mixes out. Being here and seeing it, I understood. So video is one thing and you can kind of learn a little bit, mm -hmm. but hands on, that's how I learn too, oh, is yeah. actually hands-on doing something, doing it myself for the first time. Actually doing it is how I think a lot of people learn. And that's key too, that brings up a good point because usually after each of these segments, we break out into labs. There's just a whole bunch of refrigerators back there of different brands and styles. So you go back there and you do some readings and you talk about how does the flow of whatever those gases are, I already forgot, but. <laughs> It's, Fail! <laughs> uh, I think there's some hydrogen you in got, there. You there's got hydrogen. You got that question wrong. And, and, and hydrogen and ammonia. No, these chemicals mix. Come back there. Our hydrogen and our ammonia mix. We get a heat transfer. We'll get a second dose, as we see right here. Well, you get to learn about how all that works, and the TAs are all very knowledgeable, also. And they're all techs, and they've been through this course, of course. And of course. Of, of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> and so you can actually point stuff out. What's what's this thing do or how's this work? I don't understand this part. Can you explain that again? It's really excellent. And working in like smaller breakout groups, you guys can help each other too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were like 60 people in the course this week and I think it was broken into four or five subsections that would then go out into the labs and then we would rotate. So, you know, mm -hmm. one group would work on ACs and then refrigerators and he'd rotate and uh, the whole thing was just spot on. It was majority male students 
But there were 10 female students and I thought that that was really cool. I actually think that I would have enjoyed and learned a lot taking this class with Chad. If you know me at all and you know my health issues, I know that I did not have the stamina to do you know, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or longer every day. I mm -hmm. just can't do it. So unfortunately, I didn't take it along with Chad. Yeah, plus even if you had done that, you guys wouldn't have had a video this Sunday. That's true. <laughs> and even if I did take the class, he wouldn't listen to me anyhow. What, would you say something? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Day five, Friday in the morning, was all about water heaters. So we got to learn a lot about the different brands because some are aluminum, some are steel, some have anode rods, anode rods some don't. Some have a plastic plug that you cannot replace with another kind of plug because of galvanic corrosion. Just all kinds of neat little details about what to look for and how to troubleshoot these and how to troubleshoot like the heating element without taking it out. A lot of cool stuff. Again, how to do it smart. the lazy way. Smart. Smart way. Smart equals lazy. Lazy equals smart. Yes. <laughs> you will notice that I've got a, uh, a series of valves here. Now, most valves, the way you actually read these is, is if they are parallel with the lines, they are allowing water to go through. Day five in the afternoon was furnaces. And, you know, luckily, not luckily, I guess, I would say luckily ours is broken a couple of times. <laughs> and remember Randy Owens in yeah. North Carolina? Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from Randy about furnaces, about the main circuit. Randy so I, is the RV tech that we use anytime that we're in the Franklin, North Carolina area and mm -hmm. we need help. Yep, I had learned a lot from him, but again, I got to take it a step further and learn a lot about how the whole heat transfer thing works and what the safety devices are in there. Safety devices on things that burn propane are very important. Mm -hmm. And then it was time for test. Test number one. Test number one. This is a test that they do at the end of the week just to kind of test your knowledge. It's not uh, like graded for a certificate or anything like that. It's just so that they can find the gaps in your knowledge and go over them again. Mm -hmm. Because you know, you're sitting here for a whole week and you've covered so much stuff. Then you go back and take a test on it and be like, did you talk about this? Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, okay, can we get into that again? So it's really very thorough. And you got a 98. I got a 90, I missed one question. He didn't like the way it was worded. I didn't, I didn't like it. <laughs> so also, after your final test on day five. On day five, yeah, on Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everybody gets a certificate of completion to show that you went through the course. Boop. Do, 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 do. Now, optionally, on Saturday, right after the fundamentals course, you can take a, an actual registered proctored test to become a registered RV tech. I did. Bam, got the certificate. Oh yeah, you wanna see and, what else you got? This is and really I cool. got, and I got a hat. Boom. <laughs> I, don't have a hat. I don't have this size for my head. Ta -da. Does it, does it, does it. So the RV tech certified, no, sorry, it's not, so you're not certified. There's, there's. Um, certified is a whole different course. Yeah, I am a registered RV tech. What does that mean? What can you do with that? I get to wear this hat. That's and cool. And I get to do whatever I want. No. no. <laughs> Basically, the registered RV tech is just kind of proving that you have a core knowledge. Registered RV tech is a good thing to have in combination with the inspector certification. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to actually work on an RV for money, uh, technical wise, you'd probably want to do the certification Certified. course. But if you want to get the base knowledge and have this certification to be able to show people for doing things like maintenance, like the simple stuff, even like, you know, cleaning roofs, caulking, mm -hmm. putting down decor, AC maintenance, things like that, then this is really what you'd want to have. Cool. Now, if you want to go the full tech route and actually charge and have a business, then you want the certification course. Now that leads me to a question that we get asked a lot. We get comments and questions and emails about what kind of work can I do to make an income on the road? I don't have IT skills or I don't have a job already that I can work remotely. Now we can really tell them personally about taking these courses. Absolutely. This is a fabulous way Absolutely. to do it because you get to make your own hours. You can work as much as you want or as little as you want. We hear so many stories now of people that have a little sandwich board type of sign. They sit it out in front of their RV and mm -hmm. that's how they get their business. Yeah. There's and no so that's shortage pretty, of business. Yeah. That's <clears throat> pretty awesome. That is really cool. How do you have a hands-on job like an RV tech and travel all the time? That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's a great way, really in a very short amount of time, even if it's the full seven weeks, 
for you to hit the road and to be able to start making an in income right away. So the NRVTA and the Big Red Schoolhouse, where the heck do you stay when you want to come here for one week or all the way up to seven weeks? It's super convenient. It's super convenient <laughs> because the Texan RV Park is on the same property mm -hmm. right here super convenient. It's not just an RV park for the attendees of the school. Anybody can come and get a site here. Mm -hmm. It's also not something that is included in your school tuition. This yeah. is completely separate. But what I like is, and I think is very smart, is that they have quite a few cottages around this RV park. Because let's say you want to take these courses before you get your RV, before yeah. you start it's not RVing. A bad idea. Yeah. You can come here and you can still have a place to stay that's right on the grounds and it's super convenient and you can either just walk here every day or you can mm -hmm. ride your bike or whatever and the texan rv park is very nice and i've enjoyed my time mm -hmm. staying here oh yeah the park contains 87 rv sites five rental cabins two airbnb style rental cottages and also some rental trailers the property itself has three small lakes that are well stocked with fish so if you want to do some fishing while you're here i thought you were faking it for the camera no. <laughs> I don't even know. there Wow. All right. Here's Roger and his big catch. Good job. <laughs> nice. The staff at the Texan RV Park is super helpful and very friendly. And one thing that I noticed that was very true, they said it was going to happen in the beginning of the class, but it really was true, is that the friendships that are made. Oh, yeah. Here. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that things work like they're supposed to. And there will be people that you're supposed to meet that you're going to influence or they're gonna influence you. And that's why you're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We met some great people. I think that we've made some friends here that we plan on staying in touch with. And you're all here for somewhat of the same reason. You may have your different reasons for being here, but you're all here to learn. Even though I didn't take the class, my final thoughts are top-notch facility with top-notch people working here. Everybody, really has passion for this industry. Mm -hmm. You can see it, you can feel it. When Terry Cooper gets up there and he talks and he gets choked up and he starts crying because this means so much to him, that's pretty cool. That got me choked up. Yeah. You sat here and you just got choked up because you're like, I love this place. Shut and that's up. all, I mean, that's, <laughs> but it's awesome. And so it's just a wonderful opportunity for so many of you out there. We're not gonna talk pricing because you can easily go online and figure that out. And I think it varies depending on yeah. what courses you want to take. Just go to nrvta.com and you can find out all of that information. Yeah. What's your takeaway? My takeaway on this whole week, it's, it's incredible. It really is. I mean, I can't say, I can't say enough good things about the facility, the instructors, the TAs, the, the park staff. The friends that we made mm -hmm. while we were here, all of it. So again, go to nrvta.com. You can check out all the courses that they have to offer and the history and the story behind this place. Mm -hmm. And if you decide to register for a class, be sure to tell them Changing Lane sent you. Uh, this guy's talking again. No. <laughs> all right, so this is... I can't see this to see. <laughs> <laughs> you said the PNT relieves at 150 psi, but the ECO is 180. Shouldn't be the other. 180 way. degrees. So one is temperature, one is psi. Gotcha. I might have said psi, but you need to understand what I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody? If one of these guys has lip gloss. Anybody got lip gloss? Because I need well, a touch up. Yeah, some concerns. Where's the makeup cart? Don't look right at the light chair. Yeah, that's dumb. All right, ready? Yep. Oh, sure.